Today on the show, we talk about Star Wars, how we got into it, what we think of what Disney has done with it, and what we are looking forward to. From the Grizzle Geek Studio in Glendale, Arizona, this is the Grizzle Geek Podcast. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the Grizzle Geek Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Mike. I'm Kirsten. All right, and today we are going to talk about Star Wars. Woohoo! Woo! Yeah, we're only a few weeks away from The Last Jedi, and we want to kind of delve into... Uh, we're not going to go into the past of Star Wars too much. We'll talk about how we got into it, but we're going to look at how Disney is doing with Star Wars mm. and what we're looking forward to uh, from the franchise. So let's start off with Mike. How did you get into Star Wars? Uh, my grandparents took me to see the original Star Wars in theaters. I was young. I was going to say, you I was like four? <laughs> I was young, but I remember All right, cool. I was, it was in a theater that no longer exists down there, but uh, there was like a store, pick and save store next to it. Mm -hmm. I remember going into there afterwards and we got this, uh, I don't know, little decorative, like, I don't know, like dead plants, what do they have? That, this kind of looks like a Death Star exploding. Oh, okay. I, I wanted it because it looked like the Death Star exploding. It had all these little you know, flanges coming off of it or whatever. <laughs> That's cool. All so right. I remember that. I don't really remember a whole lot about it. I remember I did see it in theaters, and that Christmas I got the Death Star playset and a bunch of the Star Wars, the Kenner Star Wars oh, toys. Nice. Cool. And then I think from the toys it got me more into it to the where I actually cared about cared it, about it, cared more about cared Star more Wars. about the Star Wars. Yeah. I remember. I remember a few. I remember the trash compactor scene, but is in just like vague little bits here and there in, in a lightsaber. Yeah. I remember that. All yeah. right, until you got to see it again. Right, and then I got to see it. Um, Right before we went to see Empire Strikes Back in theaters. Okay, got so. it. Cool. How about you, Kirsten? Um, I'm not as huge Star Wars buff as everyone else. Um, I do remember watching it as a kid because my dad loved them. Mm -hmm. So anytime they came out, uh, he would buy them and then he'd make us watch them. <laughs> <laughs> make us watch Make them. us watch them. <laughs> I enjoyed them. I honestly need to do a rewatch, and I say that every time, and I can't <laughs> get through the prequels. I'll rewatch the prequels over and over and over. You don't need to rewatch the prequels. Get through them <laughs> to get to the rest just, of it. Just skip the four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You probably four. you're probably fine there. Yeah. Uh, unlike Mike, I didn't get to see Star Wars in the theaters. I got. To, I was first introduced um, watching Star Wars on video and then seeing Empire in theaters. So that was, you know, that, and I did, I had all the toys. Yeah. Um, well, not all the toys. I didn't get, Millennium Falcon was the big, biggest yeah. toy thing I had. Had an X-Wing, cloud car, a bunch of figures. I I probably spent so much money on that, that or wasted so much money digging pits in the backyard and yeah. crashing bases down on my figures <laughs> and stuff. So. But anyways, but yeah, okay. So which was your favorite movie uh, of the seven that are out so far? Uh, Empire Strikes Back. Because it's the best. Because it's the best. It is the best. Because it's the boringest. No. Oh, were you kidding me? No, no, no. <laughs> I, was, I was channeling, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, from Red Letter Media. Oh, okay, yeah, yes. No. But anyways, yeah. How about you? I feel like it's unfair for me to answer anything, because the only one that I can really remember with like poignancy is uh, Re Revenge of the Sith. So it, it's my favorite in that it's the only one I can remember very well. So Okay. What's the best of it's the, the first three? It's the best of the, <laughs> yeah. of the, of the prequels, yeah. yes. Yes. Um, I, I, I also will have to say Empire Strikes Back. Because um, it's the best. Because it is the best. <laughs> it, is, uh, it is just classic. And, and Han Solo is my favorite character. Mm -hmm. So that was largely a Han and Luke movie. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, they, they got the limelight in that one. Um, whereas, you know, like Empire was a little, or not Empire, uh, Return was a little more well-rounded. Yeah. More people got time. But Well, I mean, Leia had pretty good. I mean, I think Empire well, yeah, showed, mean, showcased the main three quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, you know, in the back and forth, you know, Han and Leia had the great back and forth yes. with their, yeah. you know, with their stuff. So that was good. Yeah. Um, and you said you have not seen the Clone Wars or the Rebels no. cartoon, but you not yet. No. Yeah, definitely should see Clone Wars makes all... Well, the, the way to watch it is this. First off, yeah. skip Phantom Menace. Okay. <laughs> yes. You don't even need to see Phantom Menace at all. Yeah. Just ignore that one completely. Watch Attack of the Clones. Okay. Then the Clone Wars cartoon. Okay. Right. Then Revenge of the Sith and going forward from there. Right. Because okay. the Clone Wars will make you care more about Revenge of the Sith 
it actually means Revenge of the Sith means something after watching the Clone Wars. It Quite makes bit, the prequels yeah. better. Okay. So you actually care about the uh, clone troopers turning and yes. Anakin falling. Correct. All right. One thing I want. One other thing I want to cover before it passed before we head deeper into you know Disney territory is well, this is kind of where Disney took over is the difference between legends and canon. Mm. Mike, can you explain what legends is for us? Legends is basically all the when Disney took over. All the non-movie stuff, all the books, the games, the uh, animated series, everything else was, they basically made that, called it Legends, right? They're not mm-hmm. part of the main canon, which means the main storyline can change, change it around. Like, for instance, they use some of the characters from those, like in Rebels, they use Thrawn, right? right? So they can bi- pick bits and pieces from those things, but none of it is canon anymore. Right. So, uh, and then anything going forward. So basically, Clone Wars is the old Clone Wars, the movies, and anything f- past that date when Disney took over right. is all canon now. Yeah, because now it's all been approved by the Lucasfilm Story Group. Oh, right. okay. If it's approved by them, it's canon no matter what media it is in. Okay. Right. So, so all the books that so are out what now. Do we have that's legend right now? Everything that was done before before Disney bought it, so okay, um, like, okay I get there it. Are, okay, it's get mostly it. in the books and comic books. Okay. Yeah, there's there. Are, I will say this about Legends: there are two main groups that are not canon right now, are big uh, properties, right? Mm-hmm. In the space right after Return of the Jedi, they basically had uh, something called Shadows of the Empire that came out, and yeah. Shadows of the Empire was had everything but a movie. It had mm-hmm. a video game rollout, comic books, a novel adaptation, yeah. mm-hmm. it had action figures. It had everything that you would think marketing-wise for a movie, just yeah. not the movie. Right. And it was a story that took place between the first and the second movie when Han Solo was frozen in carbonite, mm. right? Because a big there's a like five-year period sure. there, and the story takes place in that. So that is a big chunk. There's a lot written about it and everything. And the other biggest property that's not canon anymore is um, the Old Republic, and the oh, Old Republic right. takes place like three thousand years before mm. Star Wars. And if you might. It is the biggest. It's bigger than Shadows of the Empire. It's bigger than yeah. any other thing. Almost it's, all of the Dark Horse comics were about the Old Republic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was it was it was uh, the Old Republic. Nice, the Old Republic was a game that st- kicked it all oh, off yeah. right. mm-hmm. from Bioware, and it's uh, it was an amazing game, right? And it had a sequel, and that basically is what started Mass Effect. The people that worked on that okay. mm-hmm. wanted their love working in sci-fi, but wanted their own story. So that's when they came up with Mass right. Effect okay. yeah. from that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's probably the biggest, it's actually got the most books and stuff written about it. Uh, and the MMO, the Star Wars game that Doug does, it's yeah. all based in the Old Republic. Okay. So the big rumor is, hopefully, that the new trilogy will be in the Old Republic. Yeah. We'll, or the TV series. Yeah, want something. We're, yeah. We'll, and we'll get to that in the next section here. So but the yeah, Old Republic a, is not canon? or It's not canon. It is not really. canon yet, but that doesn't mean they can't they grab can't it. They can't later. That's For right. example, in the Clone Wars, they wanted to use Revan, who's one of the major characters yeah. from that time period. Um, the major character. And from they had <laughs> drawn him out, and they yeah. had the scenes made with him, and then mm-hmm. Lucas at the last minute is like, nah, no, let's not, let's sure. not go there. Uh, but we know that they like that time sure. period, so there's hope that they'll bring that forward. Yeah. That's cool. So... All right, so let's talk the new trilogy of movies. Eight, nine, and... Or seven, eight, and nine. Right. So seven we've already got. Which is the only one we have so far is seven. So what were your impressions of episode seven? Uh, Episode seven did everything it needed to do, right? It brought the the nostalgia back in in a Mm -hmm. way that the prequels didn't, you know? What the prequels lacked, this one... Now, story-wise and everything else, obviously, it wasn't the greatest story. And yeah, it's kind of retelling of A New Hope. In, right. To a large extent, but it was it was what we wanted, right? We wanted the nostalgia factor with the old characters, you know that scene with Han and Chewie, right? Uh, we're home, we're home, and yeah. William Falcon. That, I mean, that was if you grew up with Star Wars, if you're a Star Wars fan at all. That scene was was huge for you, and sure. it had enough of that, enough heart that it overlooked, you know, the faults that it had. Sure, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, and you have you seen Episode Seven? Yes, yeah. I have. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Episode, like you were saying, episode seven, it had been 10 years since we'd had a movie. Yeah. And those movies were the not terribly well received uh, prequel movies. So a lot of Star Wars fans had, had a bad taste in their mouth. Sure. So, like you said, this ticks all the boxes because it brings back that, like, 
original trilogy feel to it where everybody's like, all right, I'm super excited about Star Wars yeah. again. So, yeah, I can't fault J.J. Uh, Abrams for making it seem so familiar. Right. Because mm-hmm. those all of those tropes were what made the the original successful. Yeah. Um, and the new characters are great. Yeah. So oh, even yeah. though not only do they have the nostalgia part in bringing all the old characters back, but it also, I mean, the new characters they, they brought forth, I mean, Kylo Ren and Rey and, yeah. you know, they're... And I mean, you can say Ray seems like a Luke clone to a degree, mm-hmm. but I think it's it's nice to have a female lead. Yep. Um, and uh, Finn and Poe feel new and different yeah. than yeah. anything we've had before. So okay. that's really nice. Um, and I don't mind that the because the you know small town or outsider or whatever who gets drawn into a bigger adventure. That's a common trope. You, it's kind of hard to... You can't say she's a rip-off of Luke. She's yeah. a rip-off of every hero story from well, antiquity right. on. <laughs> Everybody know, in Star Wars is... Yeah. Y- y- they're all archetypal. They're all archetypal. Some, some yeah, way. yeah, very much so. This is this is high f- space fantasy. Right. Yes. It's not sci-fi so much as it's high, it's space fantasy, and yeah. all of them are archetypal tropes. So. so we are a couple of weeks away from episode eight. Episode eight, yes. The Last Jedi. Um, on a scale of one to ten, how excited are you for this movie? I'm super excited. I I loved seven, like loved it. I loved how strong um, our I forget her name now. Ray. Ray. There you go. I want to call her Ren every time. Um, uh-huh. Ray. I love how strong of a character she is. Um, I love all of the people that we've been introduced up to this point. I love the feel of bringing back everyone. And I'm super excited to see why she's so strong. Like oh. what makes her different than all the others that we've seen up until this point. So yeah. the mystery of where does Ray come from? Who yeah. are her parents? What's, what's the deal? How about you, man? Where are you at? Uh, I would normally say uh, 11. I'm super pumped, <laughs> but it goes to and not that I'm not super pumped about it, but I think the, there's a few issues that uh, I, there's a few things I'm kind of worried about story wise. Oh, right. Right. Okay. Yeah. That uh, if they go one way, may uh, I don't want to say damage how I feel about it. I mean, Star Wars, <laughs> and I'm sure it's gonna be good, but yeah, I, know. I will. I will not like the way it goes if it goes in a certain direction, right? As opposed to another, um, you know. I and mean, we could talk about. He's the, being very coy about. You know, <laughs> right. What are you worried about? Well, I'm. Just lay it out there. They want it. They, they want, want to know. know. Yeah, they want to know. <laughs> well, the thing is, I'm. I'm a little worried about Ray. Is we talk about her strength. I'm a little worried about her strength, right? And the basically the power creep, the escalation of power from this. Yeah. Mm. And if she is more powerful than Luke, who's more powerful than Vader, who's one of the most powerful Jedi ever, that seems like it takes away something from the Anakin family, right? And especially if she's not related. Right? right, like if she's not related, and they've always said the trilogies have been about the Skywalker family, right? Right. Mm. And the whole thing, the whole point they're trying to get past with the prequels is that Anakin was special, right? Mm-hmm. From yeah. the Immaculate Conception to the High Midichlorian Count to whatever. I mean, I want to forget about that, but <laughs> all the rest of it, you know, yeah. his strength to where the the Jedi Council thought he was the the chosen one, right? The balance of the Force, as he's this powerful figure that when he turns the dark side. He's powerful enough that him and just a handful of others hunt down the rest of the Jedi. Right. That's how powerful he is. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then Luke comes around, right, and has the potential to be even greater than him. The only thing holding Luke back is the lack of training, right? right. He doesn't have anybody. Yoda trains him for a little bit before he dies, mm-hmm. but he has to train himself, basically. So he's self-taught. Right. Right. But power-wise, he's supposed to be this, you know, potentially this, you know, this... Like up, like Revan levels back from the old, yeah, you know what okay, I mean, yeah. And then to have Ray come along, and if she's not related to them, right, to have her be this powerful, I'm I'm a little worried about the power creep about it. You know what I mean? Like, why okay. is it? I think it takes away something from, you know, because already we have uh, Kylo Ren as really powerful, right? Yeah, which he makes sense because if he's he's in the family, right. the Skywalker family, right? So he's if these are the most powerful Jedi ever, him from that lineage makes sense that he's that powerful. Right. Sure. And she's more powerful than him. If she is. If she is. If she is. I mean, yeah. We'll, there's the a lot one, of unanswered questions about it, right? <clears throat> so right. I, the power creep factor, it just seems a little, you know. Yeah. Could be worrisome. Yeah. But other than, I mean, I don't really, 
you know, and then Luke, Luke falling to the dark side. That's another big thing for me, yeah. right? If Luke goes out dark side or he has basically goes, turns to dark side, then has a redemption arc before he dies or something like that. That's going to, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And it troubles me a little bit about Mark Hamill's comments about earlier in the year when he was saying that he would, they went in a direction that he wouldn't want to go with his character normally. Right. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, it got me a little worried. Right. But so I mean, only because I'm a super huge fan, right? I'm worried about these yeah. these things. So I don't know. All right. What do you think? Um, yeah, I I understand those. I'm optimistic at this point. I've mm-hmm. I've been pleased with everything that the you know Kathleen Kennedy and Disney has done shepherding through uh, where Star Wars is at this point. So I'm. I understand the worry, and I'm, but I'm optimistic at this point. Yeah. They, oh, to, I am too. I'm not. They'll uh, have to know. lose my trust before. Okay. So at this point, we only uh, about episode nine. All we know is that J.J. Abrams is coming back to direct. Yes. Um, how do we feel about that? Um, I really wanted Ryan Johnson to do it, but now I understand why he didn't want to do it because he's getting a new trilogy on his own. Right. Hopefully, you know, Old Republic. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, I I kind of. I like J.J. Abrams, right? And if right. he's... I, I think the Lord and Miller thing with Han Solo movie, kind of like they wanted someone... They wanted it ill faithful. They wanted someone they knew they could yeah. trust, right? Instead of taking chances. Right. Like, I like the fact that they're Marvel movies. They take chances with directors. Mm-hmm. You know, I would like to have seen, you know, you know, you know kind of a different director's take on it. Like, sure. the first three were all filmed by, you know, a different director. Uh-huh. Handled each one of the first three. Lucas handled the trilogy, the prequels himself, and mm-hmm. you know, it's going to happen. Uh, I would like to have seen another, you know, a different take on it, or like have someone else's vision. But if they're going to go safe, I mean, J.J. Abrams, I mean, he's the one that brought it back. Sure. He deserves the yeah. shot. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know. Do you think they're bringing J.J. Abrams as a means to rein it back? Do you think they went too far with eight, maybe, and now they need to bring it back with? I, th- I think personally, I think they wanted Ryan Johnson to do it, huh. and when he wanted to do the other trilogy because he has yeah. more freedom with that. Yeah, I think that they went. They didn't want to take a chance on a on an unknown director. Mm-hmm. They know what they get with JJ. Sure. Yeah. Right. So especially with the troubles they had with the Han Solo movie. Yeah. Yeah. There. Yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah. Or, my only concern is that we. J.J. Abrams doesn't have the best past for wrapping things up. Uh, so, <laughs> as long you know, as in David a Lindelof's not writing it, that's a... Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I think he's an awesome director yeah. and he teamed with a great writer. I think we're, we'll be fine. Yes. But, you know. So, okay. You mentioned Ryan Johnson um, and another trilogy. So, let's, uh, let's put this into perspective. Um... In May of 2000, Ryan Johnson posted on Twitter that there are no concrete plans for any upcoming movies, just some general ideas. Right. So it, at this point, is unknown what the next trilogy is going to be about. Bob Iger then said this last month uh, in November on a, like a earnings call mm-hmm. that there is going to be a new trilogy of films that Ryan Johnson is going to be uh, the writer-director that tackles that, and that it's going to go into a corner of the galaxy that Star Wars lore has never be, um, has never before explored. What do you think mm-hmm. that means? Hopefully the Old Republic. Now, <laughs> I keep harping on this. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm hopeful <clears throat> too, but the idea that he said never before been explored, right. right? that kind of makes me nervous that they're just going to go into some uncharted area and that it'll be totally disconnected from everything we know so right far. now this isn't official this isn't official but what i've heard right the rumors are that ryan johnson didn't want to do episode uh nine because he wanted more freedom with the story mm-hmm. right with what the story wants to tell sure yeah right so they're giving him something that there's that's not you know the skywalker family correct that's yeah. not part of the main thing so we could i mean there's rumor that there's going to be you know it could be um like course hunt underground, like a gang- gangster bounty hunter type movie, mm. but that for a new trilogy, I think that's more of like yeah, the TV that, series. Yeah. That makes more sense as a TV series than their new streaming service or whatever it's going to be. Right. right, right. I think for a movie, it's going to have to be something like Shadows of the Empire or 
even that, that has connective tissue with the main storyline, so I don't think sure. it's going to be that. I think uh, my, or the Old Republic is an era that was established that we haven't gone, we haven't touched that past history of yeah. the Jedi before, and it's open enough that he can do what he wants in it mm-hmm. without, you know, messing anything up. Yeah, I'm hoping that that was, that this <clears throat> quote was just an overstatement. Sure. That it's yeah. not, that it's never been explored before, but maybe that it's never been explored on screen. Or in right. depth, maybe. Or, or, yeah, necessarily in Yeah, with all depth. the past history of Star Wars, it's hard, hard yeah. to find something that hasn't been explored before. Correct, yeah. I mean, um, you would have to go way out there and be, again, like totally unconnected from the Empire, the Republic, and how do you how do you do Star Wars without yeah. any connection to the Republic or the Empire? Yeah, yeah. I mean, fifty much fifty amazing. years of you know stories out there. I mean, it's hard to be come up with something yes. unique. Or perhaps so, like you were talking earlier, maybe it's something uh, legend versus canon, something that's been touched right in that way. Pull something out of le- uh, out of the legends yeah. Uh, yeah. arena and kind of rework it however they want because yeah. they've been you know. Yeah, it's essentially you know it's a open playground. Right. They can cherry pick whatever they want out of it, as they've shown with some of the TV stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah. Now that that also begs the question: if that's what he wanted to do, something that gave, gives a lot more freedom, do we lose the new characters, Ray and Finn and Kylo Ren, at the end of Episode Nine? Because well, there's nothing <clears throat> in here that suggests that there is a Pre, uh, following trilogy of well, these characters. Kathleen Kennedy did say that they're going to continue on the main trilogy, the main storyline, right, with the new mm-hmm. characters. So, but just this morning, there was a story that broke that said that uh, um, Ray, what was the actress's name? Daisy Ridley. Daisy Ridley said she, Nine was going to be her last movie as, as Ray. Oh, that okay. That she didn't want to continue on the character after, after Nine. Interesting. So, okay. I mean, and I don't know whether that was just on, I didn't get a chance to dig into that article, in. but uh, it was on, you know, uh, comicbookmovie.com, so okay. I don't know if it was a rumor or whether it's an actual mm. quote from her or not, but mm. the, it said that she was, she said she didn't want to do it after, that Nine was going to be her last movie as Ray. Okay. So, I'm <clears throat> not sure what that means, but Kathleen Kennedy, like I said, it was just last month when she said they will continue on with the main trilogy. With the new characters. Got it. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's go ahead and then move on to the Star Wars stories. We kind of mentioned those a little bit. We've had one so far. Rogue One. Rogue One. What'd you guys think of that? I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, glowing and yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, there. like <laughs> Man, she loved okay. that movie. Yeah. It was okay. I, it wasn't my favorite, but it was a good romp of an adventure, and <laughs> that's about all I have to say about it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily like a brilliant story or yeah. anything like that. We kind of already knew what the story in general was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. But, I don't know. I, it thought, it was, I thought it was really good. I I, uh, I liked it because it was dark, mm. right? And it was mm-hmm. a gritty take on Star Wars. Yeah. That, you know, I mean, and I like the fact that it was very gray. Most Star Wars tends to be, you know, light and dark, obviously, because right, yeah. those are the themes, good yeah. and evil, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was a war story that was v- shades of gray like a good war story should be. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, yeah. that's what I liked about it. I liked that the, you know, the main characters did some, you know, questionable things, yeah. especially my favorite Andor Cassian yeah. Who straight out killed some dude to keep? Yep, he's like, well, I can't have you give. give I it can't away have info, you. So <laughs> yeah, gotta and, gotta eliminate you. And he was gonna straight up kill Galen, which, I mean, if if, if all that was at stake, I'd probably be all like, yeah, kill that dude. <laughs> Except at this point, it would would have been. I mean, they didn't know. Well, they didn't know that. Kinda, yeah, at that point, it was kind of like, man, it's a done deal. So. Yeah, true. But all right, and we also have Solo. Coming out next year. Shoot, we won't know what we're getting from so, that yeah, until we, we see it. Know, yeah, there was some problems with that. Mm-hmm. But I want to talk about what other stories do you want to see in that vein? That are one shots. Ben Kenobi. Ben Kenobi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ben I Kenobi. would agree. <laughs> Jar Jar. Jar <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. uh, The Jar Jar Christmas special. <laughs> yeah, Jar Jar Christmas special. <laughs> Darth Jar Jar. Which the I have to say, I have to ask: did, have, have either one of you seen the Christmas special, the Star Wars, the uh-huh. infamous yeah. Star Wars Christmas special, the no. Wookiee Life Day? Oh special. my God! It was 
This came out right after Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. It was before Empire Strikes Back. In fact, it was our first look at Boba Fett. It was in cartoon short, <laughs> yeah, right? It was our first look form, at yeah. Boba Fett. Uh-huh. And this this thing was like was crazy. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's just yeah, it was. It had like it had like B Arthur and a bunch of like an Art Carney. <laughs> yeah. Like it was <laughs> almost it was almost like one of those you know old network holiday shows uh-huh. where it's just a bunch of all the network stars like variety shows, shows. Yeah, yeah yeah okay. and just like oh we're celebrating the holidays but with star wars characters okay. in the <laughs> yeah the backdrop was they're trying to get chewy home for life day with his family okay. yeah. right that was the backdrop and then there was all these other shorts in it and like in the arthur for some reason <laughs> i'll never forget that i'm like as a kid i'm like why is mod on <laughs> star wars yeah. I don't know. but all right so we yeah, he mentioned Ben Kenobi. Uh, a Kenobi movie and a Boba Fett have both been rumored. Yeah. Yes. Although recently the Boba Fett rumor has kind of died off. Yeah. It's not well, been really. The director got fired. Or... Yeah. And nothing, no, there's been no talk about it since then. Mm-hmm. And the f- focus has kind of shifted towards a Kenobi movie. Yeah. Although still no official announcement on that. Right. Well, I, I think the whole Kenobi thing is, is just response to fan outcry for Kenobi. Right. And the fact that Ewan McGregor says he wants to do it. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, and he's the get, perfect age. Yeah, and you know, and he was the best thing to come out of the prequels. Yeah. Yes. He was amazing Definitely. as Obi-Wan. So, I'm I'm jazzed to see that. But I mean, other than the ones that have been currently rumored, what else would would you think would be a good way to go for a Star Wars story? You know, like a one-shot that's not like the you know obviously the old republic we would want for like a trilogy. Well, yeah, if you were, mm. something you, you would want a one shot. I'd like a one shot of Revan if story if they if they weren't going to do a. I would love a Sith story, just like uh-huh. what it's like to uh, to grow up within the Sith and what like that would be like. That would be a cool. It'd be interesting. Look at the rule of two and yeah. have you know, maybe even have a Darth Bane movie or a Darth Bane. Plagueis. The Darth Plagueis Legends book, which mm-hmm. we're going to get into books in a little bit. Was actually pretty good if you, if you're Get rid okay of the with just kind of, just let the midichlorians fall to the background <laughs> and just don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. It's all it's awesome. It's actually a really good book, and it does look at that like, sure. how did did uh, Palpatine Sidious grow up as yeah. a Sith, um, and how did he grow into his power and all that. So, right. do you know really about the cool. Kirsten? Do you know about the midichlorians? What we're talking about? Um, I. Uh, vaguely do they're essentially like mitochondria but they uh help like filter in the force right and allow yeah, you to use of. it which yeah. is yeah this is a great opportunity for me to mansplain so All right. sweet <laughs> we got, uh, <laughs> uh yeah basically before that it. yeah but <laughs> yeah pretty much but before that but the whole point is before that the force was this mystic Energy, right? Sure. It, it was, was yeah, no biological no basis bi- to it. No right. biological basis. Like magic, just yeah. Well, yeah. All living things created it. It surrounded it. Basically, Empire Strikes Back. Very, very metaphysical. A lot of metaphysical. Like uh, people were into the the story of Star Wars because sure. of even you know religious people because it played into that kind of yeah that kind of thing. And then they come along and say it's oh it's bugs. Oh, no, it's science. It's bugs. <laughs> it's bugs in your pockets. So yeah. Anyway. So, so, yeah. so like bugs infect like viruses infect people? No, infect no they're, people? well, they're, like, it, what do you mean? They're like paras- They're like symbiotes, basically that oh, okay. that channel the force. They're essentially your like you have bacteria in your gut right. that do things for your body. They're okay. naturally there. Just these are not. You don't have to have a set amount to live. Okay. You could have none. You could have a ton. So could I them. bathe the midichlorians and then become the most powerful user? Be not, inject, could you be injected with midichlorians yeah. and then be a super Jedi? Not, well, that's... <laughs> funny enough, that's what they cover in that book. Him uh, trying to figure out whether you could give somebody a full blood transfusion. Uh, and now okay. the midichlorians would just die off. Oh, okay. In that, Only in, so many in that legend story. So, so they, What they could have done with it, if he wanted to have the midichlorians as a way to tell how powerful a Jedi was or whatever, they could have just had them as... Uh, like parasites, right? They they are attracted to the force. So the stronger the, f- the force is with somebody, oh. they you know they have the more midichlorians they have. Not that they have any effect on the force, right? Yeah. You know they could have done something like that, but yeah, yeah. yeah well, who knows? I mean, so here's my here's my nomination for a Star Wars story: a Thrawn movie. A Thrawn movie. Yeah. Grand Admiral you, Thrawn. <laughs> yeah, but I mean Thrawn. I mean, as awesome <laughs> as Thrawn is, mm-hmm. he's only as good. As, I mean, a bad guy is only as good as you know the people he's he's fighting. So. 
we're talking like Thrawn Rebels movie or a Thrawn t- uh, Heir of the Empire type movie or um, you would uh, yeah as they've kind of repositioned Thrawn in Rebels uh, I would like to see something pseudo Heir to the Empire um, where it's Thrawn after the second Death Star is destroyed mm-hmm. but not involving the main people they're off forming a new government rebuilding the Jedi mm. you take a separate group of you know Republic people who are hunting down Imperial elements and then there's this this Grand Admiral who's giving them trouble right and you you condense it to one movie you know because you had that whole multiple books to go right yeah. to the Empire you just you give it one movie st- worth of story because he's you know he's going to be he's going to get more time in Rebels probably right um so, you know, you take it from there and go, you know, here's what was happening, why he wasn't there. Right. Why he didn't save the Empire, basically. Well, I will say this. Outside of, I mean, obviously, Kenobi's the one I'm looking forward to the most. Yes. But the one I would look forward to the most after that would have been a Boba Fett story. Like a bounty hunter story. Mm-hmm. The story of Boba Fett with his team with Bosk and, you know, IG-88 yeah. and all those guys, right? Sure. The whole bounty hunter team. Mm-hmm. And, and have like a, a seedy underworld story, you know? Yeah. Where he's kind of the quasi anti-hero because he's got a code, right? Yeah, the, you that's know? A, again something you see in Clone Wars is you know how he grows up into being a bounty hunter and he, mm-hmm. he has a code yeah. that he follows. Okay, so yeah, or that would a, be or a Cad Bane movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you could put Cad Bane oh, oh. into a Boba Fett movie at least in part of it. Yeah, true. You know, have them interact. And we saw that that, that that scene that never got done with him. A showdown between Cad Bane and, and Boba Fett. Yeah. Yeah, and Cad Bane's the one that put the, the dent in his helmet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the dent, the famous nice. dent he has in his helmet. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's Cad Bane's blaster shot that did it. Anyway. All right, let's let's um, let's go ahead and address, and address. we We've kind of mentioned it a couple of times, um, TV shows. Mm-hmm. We've got the one, you know, we've already talked about Rebels and Clone Wars as we've gone along. Now, Bob Iger again also said that we're going to get live a live action Star Wars show, most likely coming out around when Disney launches their streaming service at the end of 2019. Um, so, do you think that's going to be when we get an Old Republic, or are you more leaning towards a movie of the Old Republic? I really would like the trilogy of the Old Republic, but if not, then yeah, absolutely. Um... You know, a live action TV show because the only the only live action TV we've had was there was two Ewok movies Ewoks. back yeah, in, like the, Ewok in the eighties. Yeah. yeah, Ewok specials, which yeah, made for TV movies. Made for they're TV not movies, even really TV shows. Yeah, they're made for TV movies, but they were like, but they had Ewok. Like Wicket, I think is the only person from the movie that Wicket the Ewok mm-hmm, mm-hmm. was the only one from. I don't even think the droids were in it. I don't believe so. No, no. droids had their own cartoon. Yes, they did at the same time. <laughs> It was a dark days between <laughs> between Return of the Jedi and the Phantom Menace. That, Scrounging up for anything that Star Wars. Void of you know was it twenty years of no Star Wars? Sixteen years. Sixteen years of no Star Wars. No Star Wars. Like you can't imagine that now because we're getting one like right. every year. There's a new movie, right? right. And plus we mm-hmm. have the you know Rebels. We have great TV show right now. But there was a time yeah. sixteen years of no Star Wars. So yeah, we were scrambling for anything, and we we had Ewok specials, and we and we were happy to have them. Yeah. Walked, well, up, walked uphill both ways in the snow <laughs> to watch it. I don't know about how happy we were with those. I, I, mean, I watched them both. I don't know that I was happy with both of them, but nonetheless. <laughs> um, we've also, there's been no confirmation, but with Rebels ending, the rumor is there'll be another animated series as well. Yes. Um, that's Oh, that takes me back to, uh, as you were scrolling through stuff, another Star Wars series I would like to... Uh, show story movie I'd like to see would be Ahsoka. Oh yeah, Ahsoka, Ahsoka movie. movie. Cuz there's a good we're going to talk about books a little but there is one of the good books that have come out mm-hmm. in the canon stuff since Disney acquired was an Ahsoka novel. And Ahsoka's really basically good. Anakin's uh, apprentice. Oh okay. Cuz she's never seen I mean yeah. yeah. The Clone Wars, yeah, she's It's perfect. I love mansplaining and she just doesn't <laughs> She doesn't know these things, so this is a perfect, perfect fit right <laughs> no, here. It's not, little, it's not really. <laughs> it's not really mansplaining. She, you know, <laughs> she may not want to know this stuff, but this is a prime opportunity for me to explain it anyway. <laughs> In the Clone Wars, yeah, she's Anakin's apprentice. Okay, so that's cool. And she's uh, Tegruda, 
is the one with the funky head tails. Head tails. Well, head tails that come forward and and then head horns. Yeah, as well. Oh, is she the one with? with uh, she's got like white stripes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. Red with white stripes. Yeah. Yes. That's her. Yep. All right. So again, we got we've no nothing specific, but I'm excited about the idea of either a um, animated show, a mm. live action show. Both hopefully would be great. Yes. Mm. But all right. Um, one that's probably we've all done a little less is the books and comic books. Mm-hmm. Um, I've actually not read a lot of the new Marvel comic books because these are canon. The comic books you get now are canon. The new ones. So there's a Darth Vader series, there's a Boba Fett series, sure. there's a Kenobi series where it's right after um, Phantom Menace and he's still training Anakin. Mm-hmm. Um, but I read a lot of the old, you know, Dark Horse comics yeah. where it, it really got into the old Republic and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, but I have read a lot more of the novels that are canon now. And I've got a list I'm going to go through real quick. Um, I know I gave some of these to you, but I'm not sure if you've had a chance to read them. Yeah. There, is, there are some good ones. There's some so-so ones. And there are some bad ones. <laughs> um, good, we've got Tarkin, a book about Grand Moff Tarkin. You've got a book, Thrawn, a book about Grand Admiral Thrawn, how he becomes a Grand Admiral, which really probably the best of the lot, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Lost Stars, which is a kind of, I think, a YA book. Um, it's got none of the main characters, or at least not as you know primary um, protagonists in it. Uh, but it's about two kids who grow up on this backwater planet that joins the Empire, really excited to join the Empire because right. it's bringing progress. They both are super excited to train to be TIE fighter pilots because yeah. they both love flying. And they go through the Academy, and then one joins the rebellion one joins oh, okay it stays with the empire and it's their story yeah um because it's obviously a ya type of book eventually there's right. a love angle that comes sure. into it but it's it's actually really good yeah uh there's a new dawn which is uh how kanan and ezra not ezra the uh, oh pilot, um hera hera meet uh, which again, really good story. And there's an Ahsoka novel. Those are all good. I would right. recommend anybody go out and pick those books up and read them. I have a few of them. If anybody yeah. wants to borrow them, I, I've read I've read Tarkin. Yeah, I've read the uh, the Weapon of Jeddah, which is at the Luke Skywalker. Oh right. Yeah, um, yeah there book. were those uh, those the small little Star Wars. Yeah, the small short story, stories. short novella, whatever. You yeah, call there you go, novella. Yeah, but uh, that was good, but. Short. Yeah. <laughs> On the uh, so-so front, we have Catalyst, which is basically Galen's story of mm-hmm. how he gets sucked into being on the Death Star um, project. Right. Um, Bloodline, which is set, I think, about five years before. This is all Force the Aftermath Awakens. series? Yeah, these are all after. No, there's an Aftermath series. I'll get to that. Okay. Most of the Aftermath series is okay. And it's basically what happens immediately after the war. Or I think it's maybe five years later. Sure. The Republic's trying to reestablish itself. The Empire's trying to hold on. And it's a three-series novel. You know, three okay. series of three novels. The first two, so-so, pretty good. Mm. Uh, there's some stuff that bothered me. But the last one, Empire's End, horrible. Mm. Horrible ending to the story. It just... It's just... Uh, it explains the Battle of Jakku, why there's all of that junk there. Just trash though. Do you have to read these in, in any particular order or can you just go out and read them? Uh, only the Aftermath series. Mm-hmm. Now there yeah. is, you easily online you can find you know what order do the books come sure. in time wise, but otherwise no, it's not that big a deal. Alright, so yeah, those are the those are the novels. Um, I The first few I would highly suggest reading. Check out the comics, they seem pretty good. Yeah. I've read the first five issues, four issues of Darth Vader. And Kenobi, they were both good. I haven't really done a deep dive into the new novels. After it was kind of like a, you know, a kind of a blow when all the novels I had been reading all these years <laughs> yes. kind of got wiped clean. Like, oh, none of that happened. You know what right, I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, ah, because I really like the Heir to the Empire novels. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, and then to hear that those got picked apart and characters from them got used. And I'm glad they kept Thrawn though, because it's Timothy Zahn. Right. They at least gave him back his own character. Right. And said, hey, you know, we want you to reimagine this guy in in this canon. In this canon, yeah. <laughs> and uh, if they don't bring back Mara Jade, I mean, she's the one, the only other one out of that's yes. even more than Talon Card and all those guys I want, I'd 
Lamar Jade, which is Luke's yeah. wife. In oh, the, okay. Yeah. But we'll see. Um, yeah, okay. I Yeah, like I said, I, I, I need to dive into more. There's more of them I need to read. Yeah. I got the Vader comic. I haven't read it yet, but I've... Right. And it, some of them are pretty good. So I, I definitely check them out and give them a try. Yeah. Um, because I don't know if I want to dive into the Aftermath series when the <sighs> third one, when I know it ends crappy. It's <laughs> so, it was such a disappointment because it yeah. was very intriguing. Has one of the best canon character, bad guy characters they've come up with, uh, Admiral Sloan. Yeah. Um, and she plays through a lot of the novels. Like she was in the Tarkin novel briefly. Mm. Um, you see her come up through the ranks. But then it just fell apart and, you know, Anyways, I don't want to spoil it for people who may want to read it. I'm not going to give you plot details. They die in the end. (laughs) But, all right, let's talk about games real quick. Um, Star Wars games. We've we've mentioned a few, like you mentioned Knights of the Old Republic. Right. Star Wars, MMO. Um, uh, One last one I want to touch on on video games before we get into, like, board games and you're talking role-playing games. Yeah. Is Battlefront 2. Oh. Which was really Ooh. poorly received, based on its uh, pay to win, uh, per, you know, the perception that it was pay to win, which it very much was, at least initially. It, it's just it's a, it's part of a horrible trend in it's the way games are heading now. Yeah, right. It's people EA. are people are rallying I hate against people it. People who who hate I hate people who are surprised by this. It's EA. <laughs> it's EA. EA ruins everything. I, yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because the reason I was thinking that or br- wanted to address Battlefront 2 is do you think that based on what EA has been doing that as soon as their license is over Disney says nope you're not you don't get to play with Star Wars anymore I think so yeah yeah I, I agree if their license is up in what 2023 20, yep um, if they don't get their act together Disney is if nothing else they are a PR machine. Yeah. They do not like bad PR and if gamers are hating on EA, they'll they'll turn away from them and give the license to somebody else. What's going to happen to my MMO? Yeah. I, I am worried about that too. S- who knows, six more years how it'll be doing anyways. Look, but man, they already... I can't imagine someone would just let it die though. It's been living on for a while. I imagine yeah. someone will try to pick it up. I don't know. Time. You'd be surprised. They took City of Heroes away from us. Yeah. City right. of Heroes wasn't as well known as Star Wars. Though. Yeah, but it was pretty popular. It, it was when they took it away. They took it away for the users. Well, sorry, use the servers. But yeah. Use the servers for Guild yeah. Wars. That's why I don't play Guild Wars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so now the, there are other games, obviously not just computer games. Um, we've got the X-wing game. We've got this Armada game that's kind of based on the same concept as the X-wing game, except for using. Uh, All right, actually, that is for the. Yeah. I forget if that's the like capital ship version. Yeah, it's or capital it, ship version of X Wing. Um, and then there's the X Wing version, but it, same mechanic. Fighter level. Yeah, yeah, fighter level. You know, you maneuver your ships around, and they mm-hmm. have weapons and special characters and stuff like that. Um, you have kept up more on the Star Wars role playing than I have. So what do oh. we got out there right now for well, that? Well, for right now, I mean, it, well, we just start back at the old West End D six yeah. Star Wars games. What we we brought up. I love those. We things. grew up playing that, right? Yeah. That was that was Star Wars for us. Uh, and then I kind of skipped ahead to Saga after that. I mean, I know there was a version in between there, yeah. and then now we have a new system out now with like specialty dice or whatever. I'm not really sh- 100. I haven't seen it. Yeah, but I mean, I've seen it, but I haven't played it. Right. Yeah. You know. I, yeah, I was kind of turned off when the initial book that came out for it because it breaks up the character like the player's handbook essentially mm-hmm. is player's handbook for like here's smugglers and soldiers or you right know, yeah then there's force users and with their own wait and wait to get force users now pretty much all of it's out oh, okay um but that kind of initial like oh i can't play a jedi right away right. man kind of turned off right. and then yeah. never went back to it okay mostly because i love the saga rules they were really well done. Yeah, his D20 saga rules were D20 really, saga rules really good. Were, I mean, I, like I said, I like the old West End. Yeah, the D6 six games. Were, but, that was know. good, too. Yeah. Okay, let's finish this uh, discussion off then with the la- probably the most Disney part of Star Wars with Disney is Star Wars in the Disney parks. Hmm. Um, how much have you heard about Star Wars Land? Um, I don't think I have very much. Okay. 
So the idea is, and they're building it currently in both parks, uh, both in Orlando, uh, in Hollywood Studios in Orlando, and in Disneyland in California, hmm. scheduled to be open in 2019. They're a whole new land. So much like there's Frontierland, sure. Fantasyland, uh, Tomorrowland, there'll also be Star Wars. It's Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Didn't, sure. didn't they take over Tomorrowland? No, it's actually in Disneyland, which is the park that's closest to us. It took over the back half of Rivers of America and got rid of Thunder Mountain Ranch, which was like a uh, school group kind of camp area and a and a rest and a, like a restaurant, like a family style right. outdoor eating restaurant. I like that restaurant. It took out, it took that back corner of the of the lot, and it plus went into the back lot. Wasn't that Toontown? No, nope, Toontown's still there. So oh. it's it is. I don't know my Disney as much yeah, as you're looking at a map of Disney. Um, Face on for us. Because wasn't Toontown, Toontown on the here. back of the Yes, back it's of the off lake? to the left All right. of the lake. And then Toontown is off to the right of the lake. But yeah, so each each of the parks is getting this giant Star Wars land. Okay. That's going to be, it's going to have a Millennium Falcon ride. Oh, that's cool. Uh, it's going to be super immersive. Uh, when you go into the land, you are essentially on another planet. Uh-huh. To the degree that, at least in Orlando, I I think Disneyland's going to be like this too, you become part of a story. Uh, like, oh, you get I've to be, like, a character in yeah. the story. You'll have something on you. It's really easy in Orlando because they have these things called magic bands okay. that have RFID chips and and has your room information and oh, stuff okay. like that and it identifies yeah. who you are. So you'll be able to interact with parts of the park okay. that will give you parts of the story. Sure. Like, you go and you touch your armband to this thing and... Boom, it's like, hey, so-and-so, this is what's going on. Go find this guy over here. Or, sure. You know, who knows exactly what the story's going to be. But That's it'll cool. be very immersive that way. Yep. Wow. Um, the, I forget what the other ride is. Um, Sounds a little too big brother for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, it's real. I mean, it's it's much like having a hotel room key that you could charge your, you know, charge your purchases, charge your dining to. Right. But in this case, you actually are just wearing it around. And... <laughs> It takes the place of fast passes and stuff like that. Mm, okay. In Orlando, they're actually making a Disney or a Star Wars hotel, oh. and the hotel also will be themed to be like a space station. Okay. So it's like you're living on a space station, um, and when you leave, you know, the hotel will be all themed around Star Wars. Yeah. And when you leave the hotel, you walk right into Star Wars Land or oh, okay. Star Wars Galaxy Edge, is what it's sure. called. Sure. But. Super excited for it. I'm I really jazzed to see how they do it. Yeah, they're in their four billion worth of this. They uh, are. Yeah, they're gonna. Have, <laughs> there's gonna be a cantina that's themed. You know, like like a Mos Eisley's type. Of course, cantina. Are. Hmm. It's all gonna be super immersively themed. So, and Disney's great about it. I'm excited about the cantina because even though this is <laughs> totally different thing, one of my favorite bars was the Quarks Bar in Vegas. Oh yeah. At Star Trek, you know, experience, and that was. Sadly, no longer around, but that right. was an awesome bar. If they can do that with, yeah, know, the level of theme with Star that you Wars brought into that, yeah, yeah. We, we, they'll bring you into this. So, yeah, I'm really excited about it. So, um, 2019, that'll be opening. You know, Star Wars has had a a place in Disney parks since 1987 when Star Tours opened. Yes. So, you know, it's been there. They've had that relationship for a really long time. Now it's just Disney owns it and can go, oh, <laughs> we're not going to do one ride. We're doing a whole land. Right. Of, you know, two major rides. And we don't have to pay anybody stuff. for it. It's all ours. Yeah, it's all <laughs> ours. So. All right. So there we go. Disney and Star Wars. Mike, what are you most looking forward to in the future for Star Wars? Seeing Revan on film. Seeing Revan Either on film. Either live action, cartoon, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Or just his mask on a shelf and a mention. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. Just some acknowledgement that Revan exists. More than a holocron. That More than a holocron. May or may not have been his. Probably was his. It was, it was his holocron. Can you imagine a l- excited little Mike going? <laughs> <laughs> I will squeal like a like a little girl <laughs> if I see Revan on screen. <laughs> How about you, Kirsten? What are you most looking forward to? Um, probably the Star Wars Land. Yeah. Um, oh. I. I've never been to Disneyland, so oh. I feel like it would be a good opportunity to go and see that. Yeah. And when I recently went to uh, Universal, and they have uh, Harry Potter mm-hmm. land, yeah. and one of the coolest parts was being able to buy one of the wands so that you can interact with. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So to be able to have something like that in Star Wars would be amazing. Yeah. 
De- definitely. And I'm, I think I'm on the boat with you. I <laughs> like, I really want to see Revan and I'm excited about all the movies, but I am so jazzed for Star Wars Land. My wife and I have already started saving to go <laughs> back to Disney World a couple, like a year or two after uh, Star Wars Land is in gear because it's sure. going to be super crazy oh, yeah, those definitely. first couple years. Definitely. So give it a little while to calm couple down. Couple years, that's about time then, people in line will finally get to the ride <laughs> after, <laughs> after it opens go. up. Probably. So, <laughs> yeah. But that's it. I want to know what you guys are most excited about with Star Wars as we're going into, you know, I think it's the golden age of Star Wars. I think this is the second golden age. The second Star. golden age, the rebirth of Star the rebirth Wars. Rebirth of Star Wars. Uh, I think Disney's doing a great job uh, shepherding Star Wars. But what do you guys think? Please comment down below. Let us know. Mike, what can they do if they're interested in helping us out? If you want to support the channel, you can click below to get some cool Star Wars merchandise for Christmas with our Amazon affiliate link. Uh, and if you don't want the Star Wars link stuff below, you can purchase anything as long as it's through that link. Correct. Up to twenty four hours. Or up to 80 days if you put it in your cart through that link. Yeah. So, and that really helps us out. Or if you want to help out the channel directly, you can support us on Patreon down below. You get access to cool stuff like our shows early or behind the scenes and mm-hmm. cool merch like uh, the, the Grizzle Geeks t-shirts that we're all wearing. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Shirts. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already a member. Uh, click that bell for notifications. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you guys for... Enjoy our thanks know, for having me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will see you again in just a couple of weeks or a couple of days, probably with the news and our Star Wars videos. Check out all the other things we do on this channel. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.